Welcome back, design students. Let's put some fur on this rabbit. So this is where we left off with our last tutorial. And we're going to do a couple of things before we start to put fur on the rabbit. The first thing I want to do is delete the previous fur collection by selecting it in the outliner and clicking delete. And then I want to come up to file and I want to save a copy of this scene so that we are not overriding something we like very much. So I'm going to make this rabbit 04. And then we need to apply a material to this that does not have the displacement material on it. It's much easier just to reapply a new material. So select the rabbit mesh. Go to Object Mode, select the Rabbit Mesh, apply a new material, and make this an AI Standard Surface Material. And then click the Color node, select File, and then find that Rabbit texture that we created in Photoshop. And then, of course, we're going to have to go back and add some roughness because we don't want it to be shiny. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off Arnold now. And I'm going to select Show Shaded in Viewport here so that we can see that, see the material. And then let's go ahead and permanently smooth this rabbit. I'm going to select the mesh and go to Mesh, Smooth and leave it at one iteration and then click the select tool to accept that and I'm going to turn off the resolution gate right here we're still going to work with the XGen editor but this time we're going to work with the XGen interactive editor so come over to the workspace menu and find XGen interactive groom and that brings up this view here and I got an error down there. I hope it doesn't mean anything. And then let's go to uh, Generate Interactive Groom Splines. And our bunny should be covered with splines that are all facing in the basic general correct direction. Now before I scaled it up when I did this, they were, they were very large and there were not a lot of them. So let's start with the taper and the width scale. Let's make that it's 0.1 now. Let's make it 0 0 0.001. 0.001 should do it. Sorry to take so long to find that number. And then let's find the, uh, so let's uh, reduce the length of these uh, hairs. Let's um, select the mesh and find the scale. And let's reduce the scale down to point 0.3 or maybe even point 0.5. And then let's find the description base and increase the density to 30. And now the color is all wrong, of course, so what we need to do next is change the color. And we can find the color by selecting the description and finding the hair physical surface shader. And we're going to need to click the color node, the root color node, and put our texture in that we created for the rabbit. And we're going to have to do the same thing for the tip color. And then we need to make sure the highlight colors are not brown. They need to be some shade of what the rabbit is, at least tinted in that direction. Or they need to be 
white. So let's push play. It looks like we've lost a lot of our lighting. We probably need to adjust the lights. So let's turn this off for a second. Let's zoom out and select the top light. And we've lost all our exposure for some reason. So we are going to have to adjust them all. So let's adjust this one. So I did have to adjust my lights quite a bit. As you can see, I've gotten them pretty much like I want them. Um, the hair on the ears is looking a little weird here, but let's continue messing with it. So select the description in the interactive groom editor. And I think we need to adjust the um, density even more. Let's try 50. Maybe even 60. And then let's do a quick render. And that's looking a lot better. Looking a little more like a stuffed animal. So let's uh, close the render view here. I actually um, changed my density multiplier to 80. So I added even more fur. And then let's give it some more um, personality by adding a modifier. Let's click Add Modifier, and we're going to add some noise. And then here's the Noise node, and we can increase, decrease the magnitude a little bit. And let's do a render and see what that looks like. That gave it some personality. Let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to reduce the size of this window some and select my description and the noise and play around with the magnitude of the noise a little bit. I actually like that very much. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. And let's do another thing. Let's open up the description here. Let's click this little plus sign next to it. And you can see there's a scale uh, modifier. We can make this uh, fur a little more uneven by adding another scale modifier. And then selecting that first one. And for this scale, we are going to give it a map. We're going to give it a noise map. And what that will do is it will change the length randomly based on this map. And that looks a little too big. So I'm going to change the frequency ratio here. So uh, as you can see, that makes him look a little mangy. So we need to, that means that the noise map is just too big. It's covering him um, too big. So we need to come down in the noise map and find frequency and increase that until he doesn't look quite so mangy. And if the slider gets all the way to the end and you still want to do it more, you can just type in a new number. And that will readjust the slider. So I think that looks pretty good right there. Another thing we can try is, um, let's make this 100 again. Another thing we can try is in the color balance, we can take the um, black here and make it 
not quite so black. This is just something you have to play with on your own. Um, you just don't want it to look mangy and you don't want to see the pattern of the noise in there. Like I can still kind of see it here on the ears, but that's okay. Now we, de we deleted our little random hairs here in the beginning. Uh, we can add those back. All we have to do is select the mesh and generate a new set of interactive groom spots. And then we just start messing with the settings. 0 0.01 on the width scale. Make the taper all the way down. We'll zoom in on this so we can see the little straggler hairs here, the little random hairs. And let's do the same thing with that uh, noise map here with the scale. And let's also uh, select this description and add noise to it, like we did before. Play with the frequency. And let's go here to the description, main description and um, decrease the density. And then, of course, let's find the hair physical shader here. And in the color, we're going to plug in our texture, like we did for the first description. And adjust the highlights so that they are not brown. And let's open up the Arnold Render window and see what that looks like. And if we zoom in, we can see that we now have our random little hairs sticking out like we did before. One of the things you'll probably notice if we zoom in is that we have hair sticking out through the button. Um, we could exclude those polygons from the fur description, but I'm just going to leave that like it is. And we can just make sure that we zoom far enough out so that you really can't see that. So once you get your render framed like you want it, Let's uh, close the render view and go back to the uh, render settings. And remember to change this to JPEG, as always. Change this to 720. Go to your Arnold render settings and change these. We don't have any subsurface scattering anymore, so you don't need to change that. And then open up that Arnold render window and generate your final render. This is going to take a while, but once that's done rendering, you can simply save this image to your project folder or your desktop. And turn it in. Hope you enjoyed this project. Later on, we'll pull this back out and hopefully rig it and pose it and possibly even animate it. And I'll see you in the next project.